desk or my face right now. <laughs> Learning Zoom. But welcome to our Michael's Zoom class, an online live class about resin with Color Core Resin from American Crafts. I'm really, really excited to show you this fun medium. It seems a little scary sometimes to people, I think, to jump into resin, but it's super easy. And I'm gonna show you how fun and easy it is to make resin projects at home. Especially right now, it's a perfect time to try something new, right? So my daughters, my teenage daughters at home have been really wanting to try resin. So we've been playing with it at home and it's a really fun uh, medium to work with that none of us had really tried a lot before. And so I'm really excited to share it with you. So you can have some fun too. So we're gonna wait a few minutes before I actually get started because we have people filing into class and we're just gonna give them a few minutes to come on in. Hello everybody, I see Texas, Minnesota, Indiana. This is awesome. This is my first time teaching a Zoom class, so this is fun for me. I've traveled around the country teaching classes before, but it's fun to have people from everywhere all in one place. That's one thing that I think is really cool about sheltering in place and being at home, that we have technology that we can still get together in groups like this that are really big and learn new things. I hope all your families are well, and that you're surviving homeschool. I have a couple of helpers helping me today. I have Katie from Michaels who can chime in now and then. And then I have our marketing specialist over Color Pour Resin, Rachel from American Crafts, who's going to help me field your questions. So feel free to chat your questions in and Rachel will interrupt me and pop in and I will try to answer them for you. Hey Shannon, this is Katie. I think we've Hi. got a good amount of people if we want to go ahead and get started. Looks like awesome. we've got about over 300 people ready to see what we can do. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. That's yeah. great. Okay, so how do I tell, sorry, this is a question for a newbie Zoom meeting person. How do I tell which camera everyone can see? So right now they can see your face. Um, whenever you're ready to, to go to that top down view, just let me know. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna start today with the first thing about resin, which is the resin itself. So here is the resin that is in the class list that you can find at Michael's. And it comes in two parts. And I like to label, this is just a little tip, but I like to label my parts on the cap, A and B. And it also comes with little measuring cups. And I like to measure with a Sharpie, just write A and B on my cups. That way, I don't have to clean my cups every time. If I use my lids to measure, I'm not mixing the two parts together because resin is a little bit crafting and a little bit science. So the thing about it is it's two parts, a, resiner, a resin and a resin hardener. And when you keep them separate, they stay liquid. But when you put them together, they start to cure and harden. So the other thing about resin, super, super sticky. So I always wear gloves and I know that we're being mindful right now of gloves um, being available to our healthcare professionals. So these gloves are actually some extras I had from a past hair dye kit that we had at our house. So you can use any type of hand protection. You can use gloves from your hair dye kits. You can use your kitchen dishwashing gloves. Um, my husband likes to smoke and barbecue on the Traeger and we use his gloves sometimes because he doesn't like touching raw meat. So we have those laying around, but use whatever you can find. I do recommend using gloves because this is really sticky stuff. I also like to give the tip to be careful once you're working with it on your gloves, if you're gonna like watch Netflix on your phone while you're doing it, get that set up ahead of time because you don't wanna touch your phone with sticky resin hands or your glasses. Like I have gotten resin on my glasses before and it's super, super sticky. But 
there is a way to clean it up. You can clean it up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a cotton pad and that will get it up. I also you like to use diaper wipes. They have a, just a little bit of alcohol content and they seem to do great for what I have needed. So, okay, so we're gonna start right away with mixing our resin. We're gonna do a couple of different things with it. Um, you can go ahead and switch to my overhead camera now. You can see I have my two little cups and my clearly labeled lids. So the, the trick about resin is getting equal parts. So the little measuring cups that come with the resin kit help because they're, they have a lot of little markings on them. And I also like to get down low and kind of just make sure that I'm being even. I'm gonna pour the A in my A side and the B in my B cup. And I like to set mine right by each other. And you can use the measuring on them. It's really handy to do that, but it's also pretty easy when you get down level to see that you're about the same. So you want equal parts A and B. And then I just have these little bathroom cups and I like to mix them separate because I like to keep my measuring cups only using one part of the resin. That's why I labeled them a Sharpie. That way I don't get resin hardening in my measuring cups if I'm working on multiple projects because I haven't mixed them in there. Okay, so I've got using just a craft stick, which also comes in the resin kit, and transferring both parts into my little bathroom cup, my little plastic cup. You can really use anything for that. I just find that these little tiny plastic cups are a good size for most things that I make with resin. Okay, so now this is the somewhat boring part. You have to slowly stir it, and I don't know if you can see, but it starts to kind of come together and it gets really cloudy. I don't know if you can see that. See those clouds in there? So, you're gonna wanna slowly stir for about three minutes. So this is the part that feels like three minutes that are a lifetime. It takes a little while. So this would be a good time, Rachel, for some questions if we have any, because I gotta sit and stir for just a little bit longer. Yeah, I have a few that I've written down, so. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So I think the first one that we want to address, um, someone was wondering about ventilation in the room you're working in um, mm -hmm. and the recommendations there. I am working in a pretty large room right now, and so the smell isn't really bothering me, although I do have a crafter's nose is what I call it, and so <laughs> I tend to like not be as sensitive to smells, but I, at my desk, where I usually work, I have a little fan, and I just click that on. It kind of keeps the air moving around. You can wear a mask, which we all have face masks, hopefully, around right now, and you can wear that to help um, if the fumes are bothering you. It does have a little bit of a chemically gluey smell. Um, not as strong as a spray paint smell, but I know that when I work with it at work in the office, people can smell it. So I turn on my little fan or open a window. At home, I have a skylight in my studio and I just open that window and turn on my little fan. Great. Um, great suggestions. Um, this one might be for Katie, but you can probably also answer. Someone was wondering if the supplies aren't at their local Michael's store, if there was a different way that they could get them, maybe online. Yeah, absolutely, it's a great question. Um, so we all know that you know going into the stores right now isn't isn't the first option. Um, so we are available on michaels.com, um, but we have actually within the last week launched um, same day delivery in a lot of markets. Um, probably about 70% of our stores now have same day delivery. So if you go to the product page, you should see an option for same day delivery as an option if it's available. Um, so definitely check it out and see if it's in your market. Awesome. I know that when I ordered this, I ordered it all online. Everything that I needed from Michaels was really handy. Cool. Do we have time for one more, Shannon? Yeah. This also might be um, a Katie question, but um, people are wondering if we are going, if this will be accessible after, if they have to leave this video at any point. 
Yeah, great question. Absolutely. We are going to share the classroom videos um, after we post. So if you go back, you'll be able to see the video, um, I believe, starting tomorrow. So great question. Awesome. Okay, so I am kind of an impatient stirrer. You're really supposed to stir really, really, really slow. But I found I can stir a little quicker if I just don't pull my craft stick out a lot because what you're trying to do is avoid a lot of bubbles being worked into the resin. Um, I do have some and I'll show you a trick to get rid of that. But now, I don't know if you can see that, but now I've gotten all of that cloudiness to go away and it's really clear. And how I like to see the true color of it is to pick it up on my craft stick right there and kind of see that it's totally clear. So now this is ready. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is a mold pour, a really simple mold pour, because we'll start at the beginning and then I'm gonna show you some more complex um, techniques. So this is the molds that I'm using. This is color pour resin molds. They're the catch-all dishes. And they're just regular silicone molds, but they have been tested with resin and they work great. So I'm gonna pull them out. And it comes with three different molds. So you've got a little heart catch dish, a circle, and this one is in two pieces, and I'll show you that one in a minute, and then a square. So we're gonna start with the square and we'll come back to these other ones later. So for this mold, it's, the top is going to be the bottom. So you're gonna put it upside down. It's really easy to see because it's the spot that's open so that you can pour into it. And then we don't want just a plain clear resin dish, although you could do that. I'm gonna show you some different things you can add to it. So how do we add color to resin? So the first way that I'm gonna show you is with mica powder. So these mica powders are available at Michael's. They come in a little box like this. This is what you're gonna be looking for. This is the foil flakes, but the mica powder is also stacked like this with four different colors of mica powder. And I like to just use a craft stick and I'm just gonna make this one all one color. So we're gonna start basic. And I just use a craft stick and I just pick up the mica powder and drop it into my cup. And then I'm gonna give it another little stir to incorporate that powder. I don't know if you can see that starting to kind of work into there. It's really pretty, it has a really pearlescent finish. So it's not like a bam glitter, but it's, it's shiny and soft and pretty. And again, I like to pick it up on my craft stick because I can kind of, as it's dripping off, I can kind of see the opacity of the color and see if I want a little more. And I think I do want a little bit more. And I don't really measure. I've never measured when I play with resin. I just start with a little bit and then add a little bit more and add a little bit more until I get it to where I like it. And it's a powder, but it dissolves really quickly. It's not chunky at all. It doesn't leave any weird globs in there. It just dissolves really quick into there. And I don't know if you can see the shine on that, but it's really, really pretty. Okay, so now we've got our mica powder in there. And I just wanna add a little bit more sparkle. So this is foil flakes, which I showed you before. These are the foil flakes. And I'm going to just dump those right into my cup because I just am gonna disperse these through the whole dish that I'm making. Okay, and again, I'm just gonna gently stir. I'm gonna scrape my stick down because I got some on my stick. I like to run my stick around the edges of my cup to make sure I get all the color and all of the sparkle off the sides so I don't waste it on the sides of my cup and instead get it down into my resin. So resin takes, you have about a half an hour, 20 minutes to a half an hour before it starts to harden. And you can tell when it's about to start to, to get gloppy on you because it'll start to warm up in the cup. So when you're holding the cup, you can feel the chemical reaction happening a little bit and get a little bit of heat going on. Okay, and I'm not feeling that at all. We have plenty of time. So now I'm just gonna pour this into my mold. And what I like to do is kind of swirl it around in there and it looks like I didn't quite make enough. That's the joy of resin is that you never know. It's 
kind of eyeballing it sometimes with these molds. Once you use them a couple of times, you'll get the hang of what you need. But I'm gonna mix even a little bit more so we can fill this all the way to the top. Um, Shannon, while you're doing that, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, someone had a question about the mold that you're using. Mm -hmm. um, they had asked if it, you could use just any plastic. So if you just wanna talk about um, what that mold is and kind of what it's made out of. Sure, this mold is a silicone mold and it's really squishy and it's like a squishy rubbery feeling to it and the reason that you need this kind rather than just a regular plastic is that you want to be able to turn them inside out to unmold your items so you can see how i can totally flip that inside out so this is the same material that is used on silicone baking dishes and silicone so you could use other molds as long as it's the silicone. So there are silicone baking dishes I know available at Michael's, silicone molds for chocolate. Um, this mat that I'm using is just a silicone mat that I also just had around my house that I could use because I like it for cleanup. And once the resin dries and cures, you can just peel it right off of this silicone and it's completely clean. So it releases really well from the mold. So it doesn't really work with just any kind of hard plastic mold, but you do need the silicone. Hopefully that answered. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we also have one more question a few, few people have asked. Um, is there any way we can center your workspace a little bit better? People have said it's a sure. little bit hard to see um, some of the things you're working on. Sure. Move this over a little. Is that yeah, better? I think that's perfect. Then your hands will be right in the center there. Okay, perfect. Okay, I've just measured a little bit more resin. And I'm going to show you what to do if you make too much. That one was a little bit too little. Usually I end up making too much. And I'll show you what you can do with that in just a second. Okay. So now I'm just gonna stir this until it's clear. We've got a couple more minutes. You can see how cloudy that is in the cup. And in a few minutes, it's gonna get really, really clear as you start to work it in. And I like to scrape my stick around the sides and on the bottom to make sure that I'm getting all of that resin incorporated. Shannon, would it be the same if you were using um, any other type of mix-in, like the little flowers? Would this be the point that you would add those in as well? Yes, I'm going to show you another way to add them later, but if you want them all the way through your resin, like I do for this dish, you would add them now. Um, or when we, in just a minute, we're going to do a multicolor pour, resin pour, and I'm going to show you how to add them to just one and to, to how to divide your resin. And then you can also add them on top of the resin and kind of push them down into it with a toothpick. And I will show you how to do that. So it just depends kind of on what the look you're trying to achieve is. Sometimes I want my mix-ins to be trapped, like underneath a layer of clear resin. And so I would then just pour a clear layer in, place my like pressed flowers, let it cure and then do another coat of resin. And it can be a different color so that the color shows through behind the flowers. Or you could do another clear coat if you wanted it to look suspended in the clear. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. Almost there. I swear, it's the longest three minutes of your life stirring in resin, I promise. <laughs> It's worth it though, in the end, because it's really fun when you unmold. Three minutes. What I like to do is glance up at my clock and just take a, a look at when it's been three minutes, but really after you've done it a few times, you, you know when it's ready by just by how it looks because it gets really clear. Um, one more, if that we can fit in really fast, Shannon. Yeah, for sure. A few people have wondered if it's easy to clean those measuring cups once you're all finished or what your process is there? Yes, so there's two things you can do. You can either 
I like to wipe mine out right away with just using a baby wipe while the resin is still wet before it started to cure. Um, sometimes I don't even ever wash my measuring cups because I have labeled them A and B and that just kind of stays liquid in there. I just kind of keep them in a baggie and don't worry about it. But I have also wiped them out with a baby wipe or you can let your resin fully cure and then um, pull it out. Since these are regular plastic, I suggest probably cleaning them while it's wet. Okay, we've got some more pink going. Hopefully you can see that really well. Try to keep my hand out of the shot. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add this to what we already did until my mold is all the way full. Okay, then what I like to do, I just like to pick my mold up and gently drop it because I can't know for sure if it's all the way down in the bottom of the mold unless I kind of tap it down in there. I usually don't have problems, but I like to do that just as an added measure so I don't have any bubbles. It also helps some bubbles rise up if they're trapped in the resin. And then this is just my heat tool that's on this top supply list. And what this does is it raises the heats up the resin a little bit and makes those bubbles, any bubbles, float up to the top. And sometimes I like to go around the outside too. And just give it a little shot of the heat tool. And then all I need to do with this one is set it aside and let it dry. So I'm gonna move it out of my workspace. And I'm gonna show you what I do with this little bit of leftover. Okay, so I don't like to waste the resin once it's cured. So I have found some ways to use it. So this is a mold kit that is available at Michael's and it comes, it's a barrette kit. So you can make these cute barrettes for your hair and it takes very little resin to do these. It comes with two shapes of barrettes and it comes with the clips. And I know the question's been asked, Rachel mentioned, about where you can get more clips. And Michaels does carry more alligator clips. They are similar to these. They're not the exact ones of these. Katie, maybe you could speak to that, but they could find, you can find more there so you can use your mold again. Okay, yeah. so I have a little extra bit. Sorry, Katie, I interrupted you, go ahead. No, I was just gonna let everybody know if they wanted to find some clips like that to do cool projects. Um, you'll be looking for them in the jewelry department. Awesome. I know I've bought them there before and they're very similar and they'll work just great. So I'm going to just take this extra resin that I had and I'm just going to use my craft stick because I'm not going to pour it across the whole mold. I'm just going to do three different kinds of barrettes with our leftovers today. So. Hey Shannon, while you're pouring those, I have a few mm -hmm. questions. Sure. Um, as someone asked while you were using the heat tool if it would be possible to use just a blow dryer, would that work? Yes, you can. And I do have a blow dryer with me today. Um, the heat tool works a little bit better for the bubbles rising up because it does heat the resin and it kind of makes it a little bit more fluid. And so those bubbles just kind of naturally come to the top. But you, um, a blow dryer should work similarly on a hot setting. It will move your resin more, which is why I brought a blow dryer with me today because I'm gonna show you in a different one how you can really move your resin with a blow dryer. And I'll show you that in a minute, but it should work. Okay, I'm just going to hit that with my heat tool. You can see how it kind of blows the resin, and that's with a mild heat tool. Push less air than a blow dryer, so it's a little bit more mild. Okay, I'm just going to set this up in the corner. I have one more quick question, mm -hmm. Shannon. Mm hmm Yeah? Can you hear me? Sorry. Oh, I'm yeah, going to ask it as soon as you can hear me. Okay. I can hear you. <laughs> um, this one was a really great one. They wanted to know how you were able to prevent all of the glitter or the mix-in from sinking to the bottom as opposed to keeping it, you know, moving throughout mm -hmm. the the. That's a good uh, question. So if you want to make sure it's really suspended, then I would wait just a little bit, maybe five 10 minutes and let your resin start to cure a little bit more and then put it in and then it will stay floating in there a little bit more just because it's starting to solidify. Um, I can show you, I'm gonna unmold this and we'll see how it, if it floated to the bottom. And I think I do expect a little bit of it to kind of go to the tip. 
So this one is one I did before. So this is my Julia Child TV magic. So here's our little mold we made. And so you can see that my glitter did move a little bit up to the top, my foil flakes. But I kind of like how that looks. And then it also kind of settled on the bottom right there. So another tip, if you have any rough edges, this one turned out really smooth, but if you ever have any rough edges, you can just get an emery board and dip it in a little bit of water and then rub the wet emery board across the, the resin and it completely smooths out any rough edges. So there's our first little dish. And Shannon, how long did that take to dry? What's the average dry time for those? So it takes for a full cure about 24 hours. So I just leave them overnight and check on them the next day. And what I usually do is when it's still in the mold, I kind of tap on it and see, or I kind of squeeze the mold gently because if it's still got any wiggle in it, you don't want to unmold it yet because this is completely solid, hard resin now. So 24 hours is suggested for a complete cure. Okay, now I want to show you the heart mold because this is a really fun one. And I'm going to show you a couple of things you can do with using different colors. So this one's a, a little more complicated, but you can do it, I promise. Shannon, while one, you're, sorry, uh, while you're pouring that, yeah. um, if you're doing a bigger project than you know, the size of those molds, would you just get bigger cups or would you do multiple B cups yeah. and multiple A cups? I would get a bigger cup and I have one around here somewhere that I'm going to use. So like this one's a bigger cup that I'm gonna use in a bit because I'm gonna mix more resin than will fit in the tiny one. You can use really any cup. Just getting my resin equal. Get a tiny bit more of this one. It's important to get it equal. You can tell if you haven't gotten it equal because your resin will be a little bit more pliable. It won't get quite solid hard. Another way that I can tell if I've been doing a good job is when my bottles are sitting side by side, I can see if they're equal when they're standing up. <laughs> and I can tell if I've been doing a good job. Okay, so this time I just got a little bit more. I'm gonna use a clean craft stick. So I don't get pink glitter in this one. I'm gonna do an ocean type catch-all dish in this one. The trick with teaching a resin class is that I have to uh, mix resin each time, but I guess it gives us time to chat, right? And it gives a chance to do questions. So I have yeah. two more, does that work? Okay, perfect. Um, so while you were doing the mica powder, someone had asked if, there, if you recommended using acrylic paint, like could it be colored with anything else or what are your recommendations there? You can use acrylic paint. Um, and we also, I'm gonna be showing you in this little project for this ocean dish, some of our color pour resin dyes that are alcohol-based dyes. And they come in opaque and transparent, which gives some really fun looks. So there's all different things you can color it with. Um, I've also used acrylic paint after my resin is set in between layers to create some cool texture. And I can show you that in a minute when I'm done mixing. So you can use acrylic paint on them. That works great. Cool. Um, and then one more as you're mixing, someone yeah. wondered if there was anything that you could do before it hardens to level out the bottom just a little bit to level out the bottom of the mold? Um, yeah, that was a mold. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I find I haven't had much trouble with it as long as I leave it to cure on a level surface. Um, and then just doing that little drop tap. And if you want it super level, just, I would just pour it a little, don't pour it all the way up over the top of the opening of the mold. Make sure you just stop, a, hair underneath and then I just have always left mine to dry just on my desk which is level and they turn out great. I haven't had any problem. Usually if there's a little thing I need to file off it's like a tiny little 
spot where my glitter has poked up or a little spot where it was just a little bit over the edge of the mold and I missed it when I was pouring. Okay, you can see that's gotten nice and clear. Okay, for this one, we're gonna do multiple colors. So I'm gonna divide into some different cups and we're gonna use some dyes. Just gonna look at my notes and make sure that I do enough cups. Okay, yep, okay. So I've got multiple little cups and I'm gonna do, my first pour is going to do be my main part of my mold. So I'm gonna fill it up, I don't know if you can see here, but inside the mold, I can see kind of where that lip is right there. And that's going to be my first color. I'm going to fill it mostly up there. So I'm going to use a little bit more for that color. Now, if I was actually doing this without movie magic, I would just mix my resin in really small batches um, because I need to let it cure for an hour in between. So if I made a big batch, it would start to solidify. So this is our dye. These are the color pour dyes, and this one is the transparent cool set. There's a fourth one that I'm not using today. And it's that alcohol-based dye, and I always give it a little shake. And the first time that you use it, you will need to pierce the um, top of the nozzle because it's sealed for shipping. And you can see why, because it's all in my cap now that I shook it. <laughs> it just tends to kind of move because it's a really thin liquid dye and then i'm just going to drop that into this first cup let me move those for a second and again i mean if you were doing a batch lot of everything the same you could count how many drops you do but for me i just kind of drop a few in and then i stir and i see where my color is going on my stick scrape down the sides you can see i got the dye on my gloves so that's another good reason to wear gloves although I have been known to have blue fingers or green fingers before. Okay, so you can see that that tinted it, but it's still transparent. You can still see the details of my craft stick, which is really fun. And then there's also opaque dyes in cool, warm, and metallic. So there's transparent in both of those. So I like that color. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pour this in here and what I'm gonna do is kind of squish my cup to give me a little bit more control over the spout. And I'm gonna pour it kind of just down around in the sides. It's okay if it gets on the base, but I'm gonna kind of pour it around the sides. Just kind of move it in there. I'm gonna see how this is looking. It's pretty fluid so I can just move it and I like to use my craft stick because I'm going to put a different color right here on the bottom of the dish to make it look like the ocean so I'm just going to scoot this blue dye over into the sides where I want it to be then I'm going to use my heat tool and that will also help move some of this residue off because it'll heat it up and I can move it off I'm just kind of aiming that down into the mold so it gets the bubbles out. And you can see how it's making that resin move. I don't know if you can see that from far away, but you can see how I can kind of melt and move that resin. And this is just a baby wipe, and I'm just going to wipe out any excess off the top of the mold with my finger, just because I don't want those colors to be in my next pour. Okay. So now I have it up to about that midline. I don't know if you can see that there, where the bottom starts. And I'm gonna set this one aside, do movie magic, and pretend that I let it cure for about an hour. Um, when you're doing layers, you don't have to wait the full 24 hours between each layer. You can do it for about an hour, hour and a half, because at the end, you're gonna cure it for a whole 24 hours. Okay, so now my next color. So now I'm gonna to wanna to do a little bit of beach sand. And I'm not gonna use a ton of resin for this, so I'm just gonna pour a little bit in. And I'm gonna use some gold metallic to kind of look like sand. 
And this one is an opaque dye, so you can kind of see the difference here. And you'll notice that the opaque dyes have white caps and the transparent dyes have transparent caps. It's an easy way to keep them sorted. Okay, and I'm just gonna put a few drops, maybe three. And the more you put in, the more opaque it will get. Hey, Shannon. Uh huh. A few people are wondering if alcohol ink can be used for this or if that's just the same thing as the dye that you're using. That is similar, so it will work. It's an alcohol dye that we're using. So you can see that's a little bit more opaque on my stick. And I want to have this be the texture of sand a little bit, so I'm going to add some microbeads. So I've been using these a lot, so mine are almost gone, but they come with a in a little stack like the other mix-ins. And I'm just gonna dump these right into my gold. I don't know if you can see in there. There's little, see the little beads? They're tiny little micro beads. Just to give my sand some grit. Okay, I'm gonna mix that in, get them off my stick. Okay, now for this, I just want my sand to be just at the bottom part of my mold. And so what I like to do is take the little cap from my mix-ins and just put it underneath my mold like that. And now I've got it tilted. I don't know if you can see. Just so that it keeps it down in the bottom. And I'll let it cure like that so that it stays where I want it to stay. And I'm just going to use my stick. Now every piece you do with resin is going to turn out different. So every time I do this, it's different. But that's kind of the fun of it. They're really unique. I'm just going to put that down in the bottom where I want it. Oh, I did the perfect amount that time. That hardly ever happens. Now, if you want to move around your beads in there a little bit, my favorite resin tool is a simple toothpick because I can kind of go into the mold and I can see where my beads are and I can kind of make my sand level out where I want it to level out or if I wanted it to dip down. Hey Shannon, dip could you use real sand? Someone was wondering. You can use real sand and it looks really cool. It works great. I kind of want to make some things with sand I've collected from different beaches that I visited. I want to make some different things that represent each beach. I think that would be fun. And you can also put seashells into it too. If you had seashells, you can dip them in resin and place them on there. It's really cool. So, okay, so now I've got my sand layer. You can kind of see it. It's just kind of hanging out in the bottom there. So then I'm going to set that one aside and let it cure for an hour. So this is a long haul project, right? But with Movie Magic, I have one I've done before. Okay, so this one is ready. You can see my sand layer is just a little bit different. But now I'm going to want to do a layer that looks like the waves. And for that, I'm just going to use clear. And I'm going to put down a base layer of clear. So this is just my resin I mixed originally. I'm just going to pour a little bit of that in there. I'm going to just move it around. By tilting. You can also use your craft stick. Shannon, are there any mix-ins that you would definitely recommend not using and you would recommend using one of these instead of, you know, something else? Yeah, I would not use actual food sprinkles because they dissolve in the resin. So we have some really cute sprinkles that we've made that are available at Michael's. They look like this, but they're actually, oops, they're actually really, they're made of plastic but they look like sprinkles. So these are the little stars, but they come in a pack with like four different kinds. And those won't dissolve in your resin because they're made of plastic. So anything that's like sugar-based that's gonna dissolve, I wouldn't use. But other than that, really you can try anything. Okay, so now I have my clear layer down. Just gonna hit it with a heat tool. Make sure I don't have any bubbles. And it's just a super thin clear layer. Now I'm gonna shake up my white opaque and I'm gonna show you how to do waves. One way to do waves. 
I'll show you another way in just a sec. So I'm just gonna put a few drops of the dye right onto that resin that I just poured. Then I'm gonna take my trusty toothpick and I'm gonna make this into some waves. Kind of that sea foam look of the wave crashing up onto the sand. Shannon, is there any reason that you couldn't use food coloring or would you recommend these dyes instead? I've never tried food coloring, so I'm not certain about that one. Um, that's something I'd have to ask our developers if they tried. They went with the alcohol ink because it seemed to work the best. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but now I just have these cloudy bits of wave. Put my hand underneath so you can see better. Where I've moved it around and swirled it with my toothpick. And then I'm just going to let that cure for an hour. And when I come back to it, it's going to look like this. Oops. So you can see that that clear layer has hardened. If it moves a little behind your sand, that's okay, because that sand is opaque okay already. Okay, and now I'm just going to take this blue that I already used, that I had a little bit left over of. If I was doing this and letting it cure an hour in between, I would make sure to make a new batch. And now I'm just going to add some white opaque right into my blue translucent, transparent dye. And that, what that's going to do is give me a creamy, uh, opaque blue. I don't know if you can see that, but it's getting there. And if you wanted it darker, you could do another, another dot of blue. I want it a little creamier. I'm actually going to add a little more blue, too. Just stir it all in. Now, if you want it to be kind of marbly, you don't have to stir the color all the way in because it will kind of have those wispy movement to it. So that is another technique you can do is try marbling it um, without stirring it so much. But now you can see that my blue has turned opaque because of the white that I added. So now I'm just gonna pour this as my last layer in my mold. my toothpick. Sometimes I take my toothpicks and just go across the edge of the mold. That's another trick that helps it not get those rough spots. I'm going to hit it with my heat tool. Okay. All right, I'm going to let that cure. And now here's our finished one that we can unmold. So you can see that from this side, I can kind of see what it's going to look like. Sometimes when I'm working with resin, if you're really careful, you can peek underneath the bottom by lifting it over your head. Um, sometimes I just let fate decide how it's going to look. I'm just going to get this mold started releasing. See, my toothpick just came in handy for that too. Put it underneath the edge of the mold to get it started. Just give it a tug. And now we've got our beach dish. I think it turned out really pretty. I love the texture the beads made. This could either be clouds or water surf. And I like it. My daughter's going to love this. She's going to want to put all her earrings in this little dish on her dresser. She's a beach girl. <laughs> so with the leftovers that we had, we can put it again in our barrette. Um, I'm just going to get a little bit of blue and add a little bit more resin to this to pull a little of the blue out. Hey, Shannon. Uh-huh. Um, how fragile would your final project be? If, if it was dropped, would it be okay? Would it shatter? 
it would be fine. It's like a really hard plastic. So you could break it, I guess, theoretically, if you, you know, threw it like a plastic, a heavy duty plastic cup. But I've dropped them and nothing has happened. They've stayed really sturdy. Awesome. Um, one more, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, for sure. Someone was wondering if you could, as you're measuring, could you weigh the part, like the equal parts, or would you just eyeball it? Like, is it worth weighing them out just to be sure that they're equal? I have, I, I suppose you could weigh them, but to me, I found that it's successful without doing that. And so for me, I'm a simplify if possible kind of person. <laughs> and so I'm just like to kind of eyeball it. Or another tip too, is you could, if you know a certain amount that you want each time, pay attention to the little line on your cup, the measuring line, or you could even draw a line with Sharpie and just go up to that. So it's a little easier to see. I use Sharpie on my little measuring cups all the time. This one I'm gonna do half and half. So I'm just putting my extra bits of resin and you can add more dye to your extra resin. You can do anything that you want to. Then I'm gonna just swirl some of this blue down into this white with my toothpick. Just to give it some interest. We'll see how that turns out. Okay, so I'm gonna set this one aside again. Okay. Let me do a little bit of cleanup, and then I'm gonna show you guys another way to do resin that's really fun. Uh, while you're doing that, Shannon, just something really quick. Someone mm -hmm. was wondering if you needed a release agent to take out the resin once it's- From the spread. mold? Mm-hmm, yeah. Nope, it just comes right out. I've never had to use a release spray in it. Awesome. It's uh, awesome. And we've had a few questions about um, dried flowers. Do you have time to answer those while you're cleaning? Sure. Perfect. Sure. Um, first of all, if you're using a dried flower, will that bleed into the resin? Will any of the color bleed in there? The ones I have used never have. I haven't had that issue. Um, I don't. I don't see why it would. I've had as long as they are low moisture dried flowers. So I just press them and make sure they're thoroughly dried and then they just, they work great. I just have gently lifted them up and set them onto a clear coat of resin and then done whatever color I wanted behind it. And it has worked great. Okay. Did them in the picture frame mold and it looked really pretty. <laughs> awesome. Um, and then along the lines of the flowers, if they end up making bubbles while they're sitting in there, is there anything that you would recommend to kind of get some of those bubbles out? Just a toothpick and a heat tool. It has worked for me every time. So you can take the tip of a toothpick and kind of poke at the bubbles, or you can use your heat tool over the top and they'll rise up around the flower and come up. Perfect. It works really good. Okay, so the last one we're, I'm gonna show you guys is, before we unmold our barrettes, is doing a non-mold pour. So this is a cute little wooden tray that I got at Michael's was already stained this color. And the only thing I did to prep it was because it was wood that was, you know, just nailed to this other bottom piece, like a frame, I just went through with a little bit of white glue, just clear, it was just like a clear liquid glue, like an Elmer's. And I just went around in the corner and kind of squirted a line of glue into the corner just to seal it so no resin would come out that crack when I pour into it. So I'm gonna set that aside for just a second while we prep our resin. This resin, I think I can still use. Okay, so this one is gonna take a lot more. And so I'm gonna do all the way to the top of my cup. So I'm gonna divide this one into five colors. I'll see why. Okay. Shannon, while you're doing that, someone said yeah. that your, hair, your hair is very pretty, which I agree. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I call it heaven's perm. It was, 
I was lucky. I was the only one of my siblings to get curly hair. And none of my kids got it. They're all pretty bummed about that. And Shannon, I I don't think you showed it, but would you have would you use the um, if you weren't using movie magic, would you have uh -huh. used the tool on that last clip that you had poured? Did I what? Would you use the heat tool on the last clip that you poured in? Yes. I always try to hit it with the heat tool. Perfect. I just neglected to on that one. This one you can kind of see really good how cloudy it is when it starts to mix because it's such a big cup. I'm using, I'm totally going to use this time to try and get as many in here as you can. So just stop me whenever you're ready to go keep... for it because this is a three minutes again. <laughs> awesome. Um, it looks like we only have about nine minutes, so I'm going to do my best. So okay. I'm going to so be fast. Okay. Um, someone asked if the resin adheres easily to wood. It does. This tray will be a perfect example. Perfect. You can pour it, you can pour it into a tray, you can pour it onto a cutting board, you can pour it onto wood, cut wood pieces. It works great. Awesome. Um, and I know you showed the a recommendation for the type of resin that you're using. Um, someone was wondering if the We Are Memory Keepers um, spin kit resin would also work. Yes, and you can also get that at Michael's. Um, and they have, actually my earrings, there. a new thing they have is some pendant molds with the spinet resin. I don't know if you wanna to switch to my other camera of my face and show my earring. But um, that was made with the spinet pendant mold. And then I just added a little tassel. So there's some fun molds there too that I, those molds are brand new, but I saw them on michaels.com. So I know that they have them already. You can also use glitters. The spinet glitters are really, really beautiful, um, high shine glitters. And so I really like the using those in other reg, resin projects. Or you can use any glitter you have at home. You can see why I get, I just pushed up my glasses. Now I'm gonna get resin on my glasses. <laughs> really wanna show you this pour, so I'm gonna rush the spin, let's rush the stir. Okay, I think we're pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna do a bunch of different colors in this one, but it's really easy and really fast. I'm gonna go in high speed. So to do this pour, I need a dark blue, a light blue, a white, and a clear. I'm just going to divide them into my little cups. Thank goodness these little cups are cheap. And I'm just going to leave my clear in this big one. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use my different dyes that we already used. I'm going to do a dark blue. So I'm going to put a lot in that one. I'm going to do this teal blue. I can get the lid off. It kind of looks green, but it's pretty when it's all together. I'm going to do white. And I'm going to use the teal mica powder. I can get it open with my sticky gloves on. Hey, Shannon. Hey. Uh-huh. If you're doing a pour similar to what you're about to do, but your, um, your object doesn't have an edge like yours does, mm -hmm. um, would it, are you just really careful to not get it to spill over the edges or is a spill onto your workspace kind of inevitable? It, it kind of gets on your workspace. If I'm doing a pour like that where I'm gonna let it flow over the sides, kind of like a paint pour, I make sure to um, put down a plastic tablecloth or a drop cloth of some sort. Um, you could also place it inside a, um, little like those little aluminum pans or an old cookie sheet 
and let it pour off into that one that you don't care about anymore because it will be a craft sheet after that. But that's what I like to do. Those aluminum pans that are for like giving away casseroles or whatever, <laughs> and then, or an old cookie sheet that I don't care about anymore that becomes my resin pour. I use it for resin and color pour paint pours. So you can see that teal mica is so pretty. I grab some more craft sticks. Just one more thing while you're doing that. Um, for sure. Can you, can you use real flowers that are in you, there or? Um, you can as long as they are dry. I don't know, well you could try it with a live one, but I don't know if the color would transfer then. I've only ever tried it with dry. So there's my dark. One more Then, really quickly, um, there are a few questions about using paper or photographs within a project. Um, mm -hmm. Do you recommend that or do you have any tips on that? I have seen people using photos in their resin and it turns out really good. I have not done that personally. So I would recommend looking on YouTube or Pinterest and find someone who's done it and had success. There's a lot of great videos. If you ever have a question, I'm sure you guys all know about um, doing different techniques with resin that you can find someone who has had success and done it well. I'm gonna have to try that because I haven't done it yet. So I don't know if there's a certain paper that you need to print your photos on or what they're doing to have it not bleed the color. So I'd have to look into that more. I'm sorry, I don't have a great answer. Okay. I'm going to show you this really quick. Try and get it in the center. Okay, so I'm just going to start pouring and I want my ocean wave to kind of come this way. So I'm just going to start to pour with the dark up in this corner. And I'm just going to kind of just free form pour it. And I'm going to do my mica powder layer. Like I said, it's going to just be different every time. Kind of just play with it. And here's my lightest blue. It's okay if it drips because we're going to move it around. Okay. I'm add a little bit more of this one just right in here. So then you can add more colors just by drizzling. I don't know if you can see that very well. I'll try to move my hand out of the way. So this is my darkest that I'm kind of drizzling into it. Then I'm going to take my clear layer and I'm going to just pour it kind of in between and on top. Actually, I'm going to tilt this a little. I want this to move a little bit more, I decided. So kind of like color pour with paint, same kind of movement. And then I'm going to move it a little bit more with the blow dryer. Okay, now I'm going to do some clear because I need my surf, right? So I'm going to do a little bit of clear. I like to do the clear first because then the white kind of floats on top of the blue. So I'm just going to do a few lines of clear. And then I'm going to do the rest of my clear down here on this end. Okay, now I'm gonna take my white, and I'm just gonna drizzle it over where I poured the clear. Okay. I can move it like this, but I'm gonna show you with my blow dryer, because it really moves it. Actually, it looks like a wave coming in.
So now I'm getting that opacity, add a little more white. So you can just keep going in layers to get the look you want. I'm liking how this is turning out. So it's kind of that color for feel. And I could keep going with it. I know we're running out of time, but I would just keep going with it and moving the waves however I wanted to, adding a little more clear down in here where I missed, where I didn't quite have enough until you get it how you like it. And then hit it with the heat tool again. Get any bubbles out. And then set it aside to dry. And I want to show you what my finished one ended up looking like. So here's my finished tray. And what this is right here is while that clear layer was still wet, I just put down, I just sprinkled with my fingers some of the holographic foil and some of the silver microbeads. I love how it turned out. So you could use it as a tray, you can stand it up on a shelf. I just think it's beautiful. I'm, I'm an ocean girl too, so this one's gonna go in my room. So then with my leftovers, I would have put them in my barrette mold. So I wanna show you how the barrettes turned out really quick before we're completely out of time. So this one I did with my leftover white from my tray pour, and I just put some of those star confettis in it. So here's the leftover barrette from the first pour. Here's the confetti barrette, kind of fun. And here's the one that was from our beach pour. And that one I also put a little bit of the foil flakes into the tip. And then you just glue them onto the clips that come in the mold kit, like that. And these are the other shape of the mold that's in there, the squarish one. So that's how the barrettes turned out. Bonus project, right? Because that would have just gone in the garbage if I hadn't used a smaller mold and poured it into the smaller mold. So um, just a couple things I wanted to show you really fast. This, these are the coasters that I made using the acrylic paint. So I made galaxy coasters. So I just did a clear layer first in a coaster mold and then I let it cure and then I painted these galaxies on the back and then added those holographic foil and, a, and an opaque black dye. And that's the coasters that I got out. So that's using the acrylic paint it's sandwiched in between the layers of resin. Um, some new things that Michaels is coming out with, some new molds that they're getting that are really fun. This one is a cuff bracelet. This one also uses the confetti. Oops, I'm bad at that overhead camera. Uses that confetti. So you can see you can pour the confetti in and they let it sink, but then it kind of made this cool, clear layer at the top for a bracelet. So it's a really cute cuff bracelet. Um, another one they have is coming as this giant diamond paperweight, which is really fun because it's a great big one. Um, and then they also have a sphere mold coming, which is a round. So you could do all kinds of things with this. This one actually has a um, silk flower in it. So it's an artificial flower that you can see inside there that was also purchased at Michael's. You see Shannon? Mm -hmm. Hey, this is Katie. I just wanted to let everybody know, I see the questions. Um, the resin mold cup and uh, the sphere that she's talking about, those are actually available on michaels.com today. Awesome. These are one more thing I wanted to show you. Michaels also has this mold, which is a faceted bangle bracelet. And so these are also made with using leftovers. This one was using leftovers from my earrings that I, here's my earring, oops, that I made. So you can see that little earring, that spinet glitter in the spinet mold. And then I use the extras in my bangle with some other extras from these ocean projects that I did. So these bangles are super fun too. Hey Shannon, I have one more question from some people. Uh huh. What, how, what did you use to glue your, the barrettes onto the actual like barrette piece? I used E6000. That's my go-to glue for grafting. 
So I just put a tiny bit of E6000. I just held the clip and I just put it on this part of the clip with a fine tip nozzle, set the piece on top and let it dry for the recommended time. That was it. It's super fun, it's super easy. I hope you guys will take this time to try some new things. Um, you can do all kinds of fun things with resin. Really, the sky's the limit. And each one is kind of like a little science experiment, which is also kind of fun. Um, just have fun and craft and create with your kids and with your family. And I hope that you'll give resin a try because it sounds a little scary at the beginning, I know, but it's super, super fun, super easy to do. And I hope that you'll all give it a try. Anybody else have more questions or anything? Hey guys, this is Katie from Michaels. I just want to say, Shannon, thank you so much for walking us through all of that today. You made resin feel so much easier and, and I know we're all excited to try this new craft. So definitely take a look at michaels.com. Um, we've got a lot of great products, a lot of the things that Shannon talked about today. Um, but I also wanted to let you guys know that we are hosting these virtual classes um, free of yeah. charge. michaels.com backslash classes. Um, we've got anywhere from three to five a week. Um, we're trying to cover a lot of fun crafts for you guys to keep you busy during this time. So check back. Um, we're adding new things every week. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Have fun. Y'all have a great day.